if a person who doesn't like you, probably because of that whole photo thing, if they call your lawyers, that's level one of a no, threat? No, the FBI calls my okay. lawyers. So people don't usually call my lawyers. Right. <laughs> they call, they um, have a way of messaging that they want to assassinate me. So that catches the FBI's attention sometimes when they can. Then they call my lawyer and say, we want to make you aware of this. Um, there's another category, which is if they deem it to be a threat that is so credible that they need to know that I personally heard it from them, then they call me directly and they, you know, they make sure that they make contact with me personally. Um, often they can't tell me the exact uh, details of the threat, but they say, okay, this one is serious. We're looking into it. It's an active investigation. So I say, okay. Um, on the day that I filmed the special part of the movie, they came over and what's called a no-knock, which means um, not a no-knock raid. Wasn't Paul Manafort, Michael Cohen, Elliot Bro Brody. Right. What about that one? Jeez, I'm all over that Elliot Brody thing. I know, that thing, we could do an hour on that. Right? Are they all orange, these guys? All right, so anyway, um, so sure enough, knocked on the door. I was in my PJs, and two FBI agents come in, and, you know, they never laugh at this joke, but every time they come over, I go like this, Norm! Like, cheers. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was, I was in my pajamas, and they told me that they had an imminent threat, and that uh, Cesar Sayek, the MAGA bomber, the guy with the van covered in yes. the bumper stickers. Yes, and that um, he had shared his list with like-minded people. And um, I said, okay, well, can you tell me how many people? And they said no. And I said, all right, can you tell me, uh, am, I, um, am I under an imminent threat this evening? I have a performance this evening. And they said, we can't say. And I said, <laughs> okay, well, I understand. And they read me a letter uh, called a duty to warn. So I said, okay. And then um, I said, well, what advice do you have? And they said, be vigilant. And I said, see you next time. And they kind of chuckled a little bit. But, I mean, they could come over anytime. So on the day that you're going to go film this really important part of your comedy special, which yeah. is in a certain way your comeback vehicle, mm -hmm. the FBI is here telling you that the crazy guy in the van in Florida may have tipped other people off or encouraged other people to possibly send you bombs or just come try to hurt you. And then you have well, to go try to be funny on well, stage. Well, they were, they were here to say, the reason they came over is they were here to say, we know for a fact he shared the list, and we know for a fact that your name is on the list of the like-minded people. So that's the difference between the phone call and the, we got to go over to her house right now. Right. <laughs> so I've experienced all three of those multiple times in the last year and 10 months. So then, how, I mean, what's your emotional state when you go on stage a few hours later and you're trying to be funny and tell this story, but in the back of your mind, you're being vigilant? You know, I, I, I like kind of flick the switch, you know? I mean, I think a lot of comedians are a little compartmentalized in that way. Believe it or not, I really put that stuff to the side because I'm there ready to go on. And, you know, that night we were filming, but even if it was a night where I was at, you know, Phoenix Symphony Hall or some beautiful venue, I'm so excited to be there. And I'm so excited to hopefully give people a couple of hours of laughter and a chance to blow off some steam. I'm actually not really thinking of that part during that. I also have a very detailed security apparatus that I didn't used to have to have. And so um, they also are pretty good at setting an environment so I can just try to focus on being funny.